travel, don't carry cash. Carry American Express traveler's checks. If they're ever stolen or lost, you can get them replaced, usually on the same day. American Express traveler's checks, because it could happen to you. Who's entertainment reporter Dave Sheehan has that part of the story. Dave, you find him? Well, Jerry, Frank Sinatra sent out engraved personal invitations to his daughter Nancy's opening last night at the Grove. And he was supposed to be there in person himself to act as host and MC. But for obvious reasons, he didn't show up. And he's probably better off. Besides avoiding subpoena servers uh, rumored to be lurking about, he also avoided the agony of seeing his daughter valiantly trying to cope with an overproduced show that was as unwieldy as a 747 in somebody's backyard. The gaudy plastic stage decoration left over from Nancy's TV special was the most elaborate gathering of glitter the Grove has ever seen, and the 36-piece orchestra was almost double the usual musical contingent. Then there were four singers who served as backup, plus a dancing chorus led by Nancy's husband, Hugh Lambert, who also produced the show and must take the blame for the overdressed, under-rehearsed, and endlessly long evening. He was especially misguided in giving her songs that are just not her bag, like this John Lennon classic, which she badly mangled. Lambert himself didn't add much in a couple of song and dance duets. Like Paris in April and May. Your New York on a silvery day. The Swiss Alp as sun grows fainter. Your Loch Lomond when autumn is the painter. Singer-songwriter Lee Hazelwood, who has teamed with Nancy on some of her more successful records, joined the act, and she was more herself, doing what she does best. And left me grieving for more summer wine. Summer wine. Strawberries, cherries, and an angel's kiss in spring. Summer wine. And finally, the finale was at least something she felt at home with. These boots are made for walking. That's just what they'll do. But one of these days, these boots are going to walk all over you. And I'll put on mine. We'll go walking, honey, any old time. Bye. Lambert's worldly dollars each were not properly screening passengers who turned out to be hijackers. I can't believe I ate that whole thing. You ate it, Ralph. I can't believe I ate that whole thing. No, Ralph, I ate it. I can't believe I ate that whole thing. Take two Alka-Seltzer. Alka-Seltzer neutralizes all the acid your stomach has churned out. For your upset stomach and headache, take Alka-Seltzer and feel better fast. Did you drink your Alka-Seltzer? The whole thing. You don't need 85,000 installation and maintenance vehicles to solve a communications emergency. One should do it. But to be sure, that one is never far away. The Bell system keeps 85,000 on the road. Dispatched from some 1,800 service centers that cover the country stem to stern. Only one communications company offers you that kind of maintenance. at 25%, barometric pressure 29.82, and for tomorrow, there'll be uh, no eye irritation from the smog, and there'll be no irritation from the sun, because I doubt if you'll see it. Sportswear available at Bullock's.
A place in Hollywood where Lawrence Welk usually holds forth is changing this weekend. The Rolling Stones are playing there. And for the uninitiated, the Stones are currently the hottest thing in the rock music business. The big headliner with the Stones is Mick Jagger in California for the first time in three years. Tickets were sold out two hours after they went on sale. Nicole Pierce checked out the concert site. They're boarding up the Hollywood Palladium, nailing on plywood to protect the glass from thousands of Rolling Stone fans who won't be able to get in. Tomorrow night's concert is sold out. Without a ticket, you won't even get into the parking lot or on the sidewalks bordering the Palladium. A heavy patrol of Los Angeles police and Palladium guards will protect ticket holders from gate crashers. Inside, preparations are underway to accommodate the lucky fans who will gyrate along with Mick Jagger to the sounds of Honky Tonk Woman and Jumpin' Jack Flash. This concert holds special appeal because there'll be room for dancing, not just listening. Police strongly advise Friday evening drivers to stay out of the Sunset and Vine area at concert time, 8 p.m., to avoid inevitable traffic jams. The Stones have played the Palladium before, they were part of the entertainment at the 1964 Hollywood Teen Fair, along with a couple of other unknowns, Sonny and Cher. They've all gone a long way in the last eight years. Rumor has it scalpers' tickets tomorrow night will go from anywhere from $25 to $100 apiece. I guess, in the words of the Stones' first hit song, this might be considered satisfaction. But after the Palladium stand, the Stones will play the Long Beach Arena on Saturday night, and then the Forum in Englewood on Sunday. And I think we should tell you, there's not a ticket left in town. Those crowds anxious to see the Rolling Stones are mostly in their late teens and early 20s. The Osmond Brothers appeal to much younger audiences. Here's a report on them. <laughs> Let's call them the stars of Cradle Rock, the idols of the Western world's TV boppers. But a Royal Command performance in London and this rehearsal in Paris for a French television show are signs that the Osmonds are making it, perhaps like no singing group has since the Beatles emerged from Liverpool's dance halls to dominate music of the 60s. Just about any youngster who can keep his bubblegum popping can tell you who are the top performers in the Osmond family. But Alan Wayne, Merrill, Jay, and Donnie don't travel alone. There's also little Jimmy, who appears with them at road concerts, and Mr. and Mrs. George Osmond, their daughter Marie, not to mention the 12-member American Underground Band, a public relations counselor, a manager, and two roadmen from Japan. Sound like a traveling nightmare? Maybe. But last year's concerts and gold records earned them close to four million dollars. Giggles and shy smiles. Sometimes it's because they've won a disc jockey's contest, and sometimes it's because they know a local radio station manager. Whatever the reason, meeting the Osmonds in person is something that would turn 12,500 other ticket holders in this convention hall green with envy. You wouldn't find them at more celebrated rock concerts. Most of the crowd here doesn't know what happened at Woodstock, let alone who was there. And some of them, a very small number, wished they hadn't even come. Oh, go away, little girl. Go away, little girl. You turn. A thunderclap of music, song, and darkness. It's almost magic. But your ringing ears, yes, for a full hour afterwards, mean you're not likely to forget an evening with the Osmond Brothers. Larry Pomeroy, CBS News, Indianapolis. The next evening with the Osmond Brothers for local fans won't be until September at Anaheim Stadium.
Now, this might interest the Osmonds. The price of gold reached a record high of $67. for carnival or a sun-soaked vacation. Texaco is working in Trinidad to help clean up America's air. That's right, America's air. Here at our huge refinery, we're building a new plant of advanced design. Its purpose? To remove even more sulfur from fuel oil before it's delivered to American industry. Mexico can provide more of the cleaner burning fuel we need to protect our urban environment and the people who live in it. At Texaco, we're working to keep your trust. Miami Beach, preparing for this summer's political conventions, hopes to avoid the violence that plagued Chicago four years ago. Today, the Miami Beach City Council approved penalties of a thousand dollars fine or 90 days in jail or both for protesters who march on city streets without a permit. A police spokesman said the permit procedure would make it easier for police to handle demonstrations. Another problem is where the demonstrators will stay, and we have a report from Ike Pappas. There's a small golf course near the Miami Beach Convention Complex. Beach Mayor Chuck Hall, acceding to demands of protest leaders, would like the grounds to serve as a campsite for the thousands of demonstrators expected here for the two conventions. The matter was due to be debated today before the city council, which must give its approval. Some members of the council have been actively opposing offering the demonstrators any site. The meeting was heavily attended by Miami Beach residents, many of them elderly retirees, who fear violence if demonstrators come here and who want the whole proposal defeated. The mayor was ill, he could not attend End. The council wanted more information, and the matter was put off until further notice, and this angered people. What buck stops at the council, you pass the buck to the city manager, contrary to the charter. You have no right to do that. It's up to you to make this political decision, and you're afraid to do it. we got a right to talk. I have lived here 47 years, and I will not take this sitting down. The meeting degenerated into a brief period of confusion as police moved through the crowd, attempting to restore quiet. The dialogue continued outside. Old-timers took on representatives of the protest groups who promised to post bond and pay for any damage done. Well, can I ask you one question? We got a lot of old people down here that walk around at about conditions and everything. What's going to happen with this bond if, if your people had come down here, snatch purses, and, and really knock these and people over. The people with heart attacks die from it. Are they going to be able to sue you for that? The point is, we don't want to come here and uh, and have what we're trying to say to the Democratic and Republican Party and the People's Party thing here, we don't want that distorted by violence. Okay, because will, you now, will you let me finish, please? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Because if we come down here and have it distorted by violence, the media comes up, picks up that whole thing, says, look, all the windows were trashed over here, and the message is lost. You know, we don't want them in parks and golf courses and things like that. Let them come in here and check into the hotel like, it, like everybody else. Right. 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 The people have the gripes of the people that can't afford to sleep in the people planning the convention demonstrations say that they will get their campsite from the city, but only in the final days before the convention, the city hoping to discourage people from coming here to express their feelings. The city manager's office says only that he will deal with the matter at the appropriate time. Ike Pappas, CBS News, Miami Beach.